what is going on guys look at that beautiful ream you got to give it to them that is a nice looking emblem there very nice looking units they look really good sitting out here beside the house the women like them because they look pretty in their flower beds but what we are going to discuss here just really quickly is the charging chart on these new pieces of equipment here from Ream. Because I know a lot of guys were kind of getting thrown off by these charts and these things were getting severely overcharged. So just so we know what we're working with there, if you look at the model number up top there, we've got a 30. All right. So we're a two and a half ton piece of equipment and we come over here to our chart all along the top we've got our different sizes of unit our tonnage going from left to right smaller to larger we find our 30 and we have a couple to choose from so we have a 1530 here we've got a 1530 there we've got another 1530 all right here in this area so you say okay which one of these do i go by you've got all these crazy abbreviations there's cfs and ufs lhs rfs you're going what in the hell is all this stuff and then when you start looking down through here at our subcooling and everything it can be radically different from one column to the next some of them are very, very different. I mean, it'll be the difference between 9 degrees and like 23 degrees. And that's why they were getting way overcharged. Because guys were just kind of taking middle of the road. They were saying, well, it's anywhere from 9 to 23, so let's shoot somewhere in the middle. But what these stand for is your indoor unit. And there's a little footnote down here that, of course, none of us ever want to read any of that stuff. But it clearly tells us that UF stands for upflow, RF is for right flow. If you have a horizontal unit, you've got right flow. And over here, you've got a left flow. And then there's also a, a DF, and that's when it really got different. Upflow and downflow on these things are really different. Downflow units have an extremely high subcooling for some reason. But if we get down here in the shade so we can see this a little bit better, this unit right here that we're working on, let's go ahead and get us an outdoor temperature here. We are up in the 90s here yesterday and today. It has been very hot. So we're gonna be somewhere in the upper 80s to 90 and if we come over here I've already got my column marked where we should be we're gonna come over here and this is our outdoor so right here we've got a choice of 95 degrees or 82 so we follow those two columns over and we're gonna be somewhere between 9 and 8 degrees on our subcooling there And then, you know, we've got our approximate pressures, what we would be running. So, talk about rotten apples. <laughs> oh, I don't want to step in that, man. If I get that in my shoes, it's going to be smelling all day long. So, I kind of like these reams. It's got a nice little tray there. Put our screws and our caps. We'll go ahead and get hooked up to this one, see what it's running. This unit's only been in a little while. What was the date on that thing? 5, 2018, so this is its second year of service. They are nice and quiet. I really like how they do their wiring and everything. They bundle it up really, really nice everything is bundled up at the factory so you ain't got stuff going crazy out here and rubbing they do the same thing down inside there 
better than most other companies out there way better than Linux man Linux just crams everything in out there they don't care if something's rubbing or not man Linux is bad about having rub outs because of copper and stuff like that so we're gonna go ahead and purge our hoses out here we're gonna come through our manifold we're gonna purge a little over here on our blue get the air out of there so none of you guys fuss at me gotta watch out for the YouTube police Love the YouTube police. And see, we ended up with right at 90 degrees there. Okay. So we'll let that adjust a little bit. But we are sitting basically at 135 and 340. I know Justin, Mr. Bieber, was asking about these covers right here. I told him the number and gave him the link. I hope you got that, Justin. If not, look back on one of my old videos. I give the number for those things. Those are sold through Ferguson, not Ferguson, uh, Granger. And then in some places, Granger is called Dayton. So these are the Dayton gauge covers. And then there's also the online version of Granger and Dayton, and that's called Zorro Tools, but they're all three the same thing. So the best place to get those, if you want them, is on Zorro Tools. And you can actually go on eBay, find them on eBay, but when you look down and scroll down, you'll see the seller and it's Zorro Tools. And then you'll get it, you know, no tax and no shipping and all that jazz. So let's go ahead and get us some temperatures here. And of course we've got our lovely painted Rubitex here so we can be up to code. And this is a little harder one-handed, but I'm going to find the sweet spot and we're going to say that we are somewhere around 89 to 90 degrees there. So let's just call it 90. And we are sitting at about 12 degrees subcooling there. So that is just a little smidge high. We should be right around 9 on this one. That is within reason. It's not terribly overcharged. And on the suction line, we'll say we got about 58 to 57. And that puts our superheat at about 10. So we're looking pretty good there. What I'll usually do if I'm just a little bit over like this, whenever I take my gauges off and you new guys, you want to make this just part of your routine what you do if you make this a habit you'll do it every time you know we call it best practices so whenever you disconnect from a unit you want to take your red hose off you want to open up both your valves you want to bleed all that liquid that you've got inside that red hose back into the unit through your blue hose and then whenever you equalize over here and these two pressures become the same it's really nice to have a sight glass because you'll see that liquid as it gets pulled through there. And whenever you're equalized, then you can go ahead and take your blue hose off. And all you have is just a very, very small amount of vapor left in your hose so you're not taking any refrigerant from the system you're working on. But in a situation like this, where my subcooling is just a little smidge high, what I'll do is go ahead and take my blue hose off and then I'm gonna open up my valves with my red still attached down there and I'm just going to fill my hoses up with liquid and then disconnect the red and I'm just going to take a little bit with me and that is going to get my sub cooling down a little closer to where we need to be since this one is just a hair overcharged. 
nothing major. Usually when I see these overcharged, we're talking like four pounds of refrigerant. And we were having a very bad problem of, they would work just fine in air conditioning. You'd get by an air conditioning overcharge, but the first time they put it in heat mode, it would trip high pressure on the board. You'd throw a fault over there and start flashing a code. The outdoor unit would be shut off and they were getting by on straight electric heat and they'd get a couple of high power bills and then they'd give you a call and say, hey, this new unit of yours, my power bill went way up. What's going on? You go out there and check it and sure enough, you're tripped on high head and you reset the board and then find out that your pressures are just crazy. I mean, they're just wacko. You're up there pushing 500 PSI and you know it can handle it in the AC, but it cannot handle it in the winter time. So you're gonna have to recover some refrigerant and get it back down there. You know, there's a heating chart also that you can go by down at the, the bottom. The bottom row of numbers is for heating. And you can see in AC, we're calling for around nine, but then in heating down there, like on a 47 degree day, which would be pretty normal, 47 degrees, man, that's 26 flipping degrees subcooling so you can see that it's radically different but anyway that's just a little quick once over on these charts for the new ream stuff because that does kind of throw some guys because they don't read that little footnote on the bottom of that door and then you don't really know what your subcooling supposed to be but you're just going by your indoor unit whether your upflow downflow right discharge or left discharge so just keep that in mind, guys. If you or your company is starting to work with these new Linux units, so far they are very good. Hadn't seen a whole lot of problems with them. The only leaks that I've seen so far are, you know, field solder joints. I've seen a few of those. And then there was a problem early on when they first came out with four and five ton pieces of equipment and that involved the reversing valve down there uh something to do to vibration the reversing valve would get some hairline cracks in it and you'd lose all your refrigerant and man that was a hard leak to find it wouldn't even hardly bubble and that's actually when i got my ultrasonic leak detector i use a redneck ultrasonic on the very first one that i went to and i took a piece of vinyl tubing like on a condensate pump and I hooked it to a funnel and held it up to my ear you know like an old lady back in the day she was hard of hearing she'd have a funnel up to her ear so she could hear and climbed to you know took the fan out climbed down inside of there and I could hear it I knew it was out there somewhere and I traced it down to that dang reversing valve and then come to find out it was a known issue that Reem had told everybody about but then my boss failed to relay that to all of us technicians and that would have made life a lot easier but hey shit happens but after that i got a real ultrasonic and now i can bang those things out like crazy because i got supersonic hearing but anyway guys we're going to be okay on this one we're just going to keep a couple of hoses full of refrigerant get that sub cooling a little bit closer to nine degrees but that's what I got for you today, guys. Don't step in rotten apples. And look out for all those funky abbreviations on these ring charts. So you know what all those crazy hieroglyphics are all about and how to charge these things. All right, you guys. As always, I appreciate you watching. Like and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one. Oh, the Goodman just turned on. Did you hear it? Goodman. See you guys.